G'day, it's Paul Antonelli here with this next episode um, of the ideal business process and model. Uh, what I wanted to do today was to, um, what we've been talking about was uh, in the previous episodes was the ideal business and we also touched on the uh, concept of the ideal scene, which is a really important part of creating your ideal business. Now, what I want to talk about today is something that I believe will take you a long way towards creating uh, an ideal business. Uh, I call it the 3P balance and tension, the 3P balance and tension. Uh, let me explain what that is. Uh, the P stands for people. Every single business uh, on the planet has three groups of people involved in it. You've got clients, you've got your team members, and then there's the business owner as yourself. So there, and, and there's, there's no exception, every single business has these three groups of people. And what we find is when you think back through your business um, and businesses that you might have worked for before and previously where you've worked, uh, one of the constant challenges uh, in any business is the tension uh, between these three groups of people. So for example, let me, let me explain what this looks like. Um, so you might, for example, provide an exceptional level of service for your clients. They love it, clients absolutely love it. You might have extended hours, uh, over the top sort of service requirements that they, they love, they absolutely love it. Unfortunately, that may create some issues for your team uh, and because of the additional cost for you, if you haven't done it correctly, it might actually not be that ideal for you. So that's an example where you might have something that's great for one group of people, but not necessarily for the other two. It could go the other way as well. Uh, in order to retain team members, you might have some uh, flexibility, ability to work from home, uh, or the scope to, um, to maybe they don't get involved in certain activities. And that's great for them both from a retention and a job satisfaction perspective, but it might not be ideal for clients because it might not enable you to deliver the service levels that you want or for yourself as the business owner. So this is something that's, um, it, it's a different way of thinking about your business. If you sort of keep at the forefront of your mind that there's three groups of people, clients, the team, and the business owners, um, then, it, it gives you an opportunity to put a filter on anything that you think about or imp implementing in the business or any changes that you might make. Uh, at Invisbiz, the business, one of my businesses, uh, our, our entire process is working with business owners to create an optimum outcome from these group, three groups of people. That's actually our key product. So when we work with business owners, we want to make sure that anything that we implement into the business, any changes that are made in the business, will deliver an optimum outcome for clients, for the team, and for themselves, for yourself as a business owner. If you can do that, always apply that filter to anything that you're looking at doing within the business. It'll, it'll drive you towards a more optimal outcome and something that's going to deliver a better result for, for the business because if those three groups of people are satisfied and have a better outcome, then your business is gonna thrive and grow. It's just, it just has to, there's no, there's no other way to go about it. And if you think in, in a business, this is a constant challenge, constant challenge in the business. You know, you sort of have times when uh, clients are really happy and then something changes in the marketplace. And so then you have to make adjustments and then the clients might be going, oh, this is great. These changes have been really good for us. Uh, but then the team's not so satisfied with it. You know, I think back in a uh, couple of our businesses, well, one of our businesses, for example, we had a, um, a situation where it was quite challenging uh, with, with regards to phone calls. You know, we had a real situation where it was a really difficult process. You know, as the business grew, you know, we weren't able to manage the level of phone calls. So then we put in place a call answering service. Um, and that ended up being more beneficial for clients because they could get through. We had a call answering service that would take calls all times of, you know, all times. You know, we tried to aim for a uh, pretty much a seven day uh, ability to take calls and that worked quite well for a while. But what we found when we'd done that, 
it, it separated the, um, the clients from our actual operatives, our franchisees in this particular business, and it, and it wasn't optimal for them. And so they were getting messages and the people on the phones obviously didn't have enough information as an answering service about the business and sort of started creating some issues whilst we delivered a better outcome for clients, it wasn't actually that good for franchisees. So we had to then work a little bit further on that and go, well, how do we optimise this? And what we worked out was it was basically using a blended opportunity where we had an answering service, but clients could opt to, by putting in a postcode, actually get straight through to the operative. Uh, and this proved to be a really good solution because it was a great solution for clients and it was a better, a, a better solution for franchisees who actually wanted it to operate like that. And of course, for us, Myself as a business owner, it delivered a much, much better outcome. And this is a constant thing to keep in mind. You know, business, uh, if you've been in business for many years, you'll understand that it's always changing, nothing static. And when you resolve and improve one area, it just highlights a, an, another area that's not so good or actually needs some attention. And so when you go through the process of um, growing a business and exp expanding a business, a spotlight invariably gets uh, placed on the weakest area, the thing that needs improvement or something that hasn't, you know, was okay at one level, but when you move it to another level, it causes issues. Um, another example is as, you know, with one of our businesses where we sell franchises, um, we d we've developed a really good sales process. It was working really well. Um, and we set up a framework of high support for franchisees so that really guarantees their success. And that worked really well um, when we, were, we weren't doing the same volumes of sales that we were doing, that we're doing now at this point in time. But then we ended up overloading and overstressing the system. So it was optimal for, for the clients, being the franchisees, it worked really well for them. They were able to get really well trained, get onto the ground, effectively get work flowing through. But what we found in that transition process and as a business grew that that system, which was optimal for them, actually ended up becoming a real challenge for the business, both from a systems point of view and a resourcing point of view. So then we had to adjust again and go, well, okay, how do we make some changes? And we made quite a few changes. You know, We changed um, you know, the, the staging and when we would bring people on board. We also looked at closely at, and we've got a high level of automation in the business, which we, uh, we use in all our businesses. We looked at increasing more automation as well. And we also looked at how we could spread that load across the, the country uh, in order to deliver a better outcome for all parties involved. So whilst we had, at the, the initially we had a, a few trainers involved, dedicated trainers, then we opted for more like a mentoring, a buddy system, and then we spread the training uh, across the country and, and opened that up. And so that enabled us to not only deliver a better outcome for clients, new franchisees coming on board, but also for the trainers, which are our team members, and for our team um, who's facilitating and administering that. So I think it's an important thing to keep in mind that, that when you're uh, growing your business, as things change in the business, you're going to have this constant uh, challenge between these three groups of people. It's just inevitable um, you'll find that if you can adopt a viewpoint and this is something that i'm very particular about my businesses and my team to keep a really close attention on is it an outcome anything that we're going to change is it going to deliver a better outcome for all parties for clients uh, for team members and for myself as the business owner uh, another we're working with another client at the moment uh, a legal practice, uh, helping them expand nationally using a licensing model. And one of the challenges was, um, you know, if you've dealt with lawyers and legal services before, this, the service framework isn't that great. Uh, it tends to be very focused on uh, the legal processes and structures, and it's not very client-centric at all. And so we're aiming to work with the client by bringing in play some really high-level automation and systemization, which will deliver a much better outcome for clients. This will include notifications, the ability for clients to look up information relating to their cases and matters, updates for them. Now, if we, we could do that by creating a, a task list and a way that uh, the lawyers themselves could actually provide this information, 
but then it wouldn't really be optimal for them. So if you think about that, it's, it'd be greater for clients because they're getting better information, they're kept in up to date, you know, they, they've got more transparency. But what we find, what we'd find in the process is that lawyers then would end up developing, um, spending more time on lower level admin activity, which isn't great for them doesn't actually lift their job satisfaction level. So, so we look very closely at that as we were designing out that process to see if we could le- lift a level of automation. So there really is almost nothing for the lawyers to do. So that's through systemization and using an automation system. So that's a, another example of by thinking, really changing your thinking in relation to how you approach and how you develop things, uh, it can make a big difference to uh, your overall business structure. And look, you hear it all the time um, that if you're a client-centric business, then it'll, it'll be good, it'll sort itself out. It always works really, really well. And that's great, I, and I agree that it's important to be client-centric, but equally as important is your team and being able to grow and expand your team and also for yourself as a business owner. And so whatever you're doing, I mean, the optimum outcome for each of those parties is what they would consider ideal for themselves. So what, what do your team members see as ideal? And what would yourself as a business owner consider ideal in any situation? And we all know about businesses like um, Uber, for example. Um, there's, there's a range of these platforms. Uh, if you look at Uber as a really good example, uh, you know, we've, we've used it, we've all used Uber. It's a great service, I'll go down the road you know, I punch a, I use one today, you know, punch it on my phone. And within, you know, four or five minutes, if it's not there within five or six minutes, and it's a long time, you get a vehicle that turns up, picks you up nice and clean, fixed price, takes you back to where you need to go. It's great. It's actually an optimal outcome for myself as a client. Uh, from the, the driver's perspective, it can be rather hit and miss. Um, you know, the average hourly rate for someone who's doing Uber driving isn't that high when you take into account running costs of the vehicle. So it's not, it's not ideal for them. It, it meets a market need where people can do it, moonlight it, even, even potentially generate revenue around it. But it's not optimal, it's not ideal. It's, it's more lean towards driving the best outcome for the clients. And I think Uber now is making a profit. They've sort of moved into that zone. But for many, many years, it really wasn't a viable model uh, from a profitability point of view. So it, the way that they could deliver those sort of outcomes to the clients was it wasn't a model that actually made money. And, and I know that model will evolve, but it's an example of, uh, and, and it's fine, these organizations, you know, raise capital, move to the next stage, raise more capital, increase their valuation, raise more capital. But it's not something that um, as uh, business owners that we're building businesses, and my, my philosophy with businesses is to, you know, from the get-go build businesses that are cash flow positive and profitable. Uh, that's how I like to build my businesses. I don't want to be dependent on external cash. So that's an example that if you if you really want to build an ideal business to apply the three P concept, uh, and and you can actually do that, you know. And when you when you think that through, look at your business at the moment. Look at any problem, or any innovation, or any new service that you want to add, and how can you optimize it so it works brilliantly for not only clients, but also the team by making it more efficient for them, taking away low level, uninteresting activity. Uh, and for yourself as from the business owner's perspective, which from, from a, as a business owner, the ideal outcome is your, your team is super happy, loving what they're doing, totally engaged. Uh, and your clients are just, the service is fantastic. It's improving. They, they really pick the value in what you're doing, love the business model, and it's profitable for you. And so if you can apply that 3P filter uh, at anything you can do, and you can do it at any level within your business, it really has the opportunity to change your thinking about the way you go making changes in your business and making improvements. And it, as part of the ideal business model process, you know, I think an ideal business is one that does deliver optimum outcomes to those three groups of people. And if you can do that, you're really gonna establish a platform and a foundation for sustainable growth into the future. So hopefully that concept makes sense. Uh, uh, It's something that I've spent quite a bit of time uh, looking at closely in, in not only my own businesses, but other businesses, and it can make a massive difference. 
So thanks for, uh, thanks for listening in. Trust that makes sense and you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to our next catch up and episode. Ciao for now.